it is true that sometimes the um, the diagnosis, for instance, of a patient with the incontinence, is clear from the, the start of the um, uh, history taking or the objective examination. But uh, some details, uh, for instance, uh, the bladder capacity, the um, sensation of the bladder, the ability to the, of the bladder to empty during the avoiding phase, uh, all, all these details uh, can be studied only with uh, a urodynamic test. And uh, these details may be very important in deciding the uh, strategy that is more uh, um, safe and effective in the single patient. Even for something that appears relatively straightforward, let's take, for example, post-prostatectomy incontinence. This has traditionally been treated as a stress-only condition. We actually recently reviewed our urodynamic findings, and there was a substantial portion where therapies directed at the bladder or combined with stress incontinence procedures were what was needed to optimize outcomes for the patient. So we embark on these studies with a question. What information do we really need to optimize outcomes for this patient? And that will oftentimes fundamentally shift the therapeutics that we offer. Even if the treatment strategy does not change after urodynamics, it does not mean it was useless because it confirms the strategy and provides safety of decision. Considering prostate cancer, for example, probably no physician would ever proceed to surgery or radiotherapy without histological proof of cancer. Even if the rectal exam shows a hard nodule, the PSA is high and the MRI shows a suspicious area in the prostate. So despite that lower tract symptoms and dysfunctions can be very complex and imply a large impact on quality of life, they still seem to have the label of being easily manageable compared to oncology, where interdisciplinary cancer boards are more and more mandatory to discuss and plan the treatment strategy for the individual patient. And I think personally, this should be the future also in functional urology. Take, for example, a man presenting with an overactive bladder. Uh, the treatment offered will change if uh, the finding is he has an overactive bladder or one that is obstructed and the symptoms are secondary to it. So it directly informs management. If it's an older man with poor flow, for example, whether he's offered outflow surgery or not should depend whether the man is obstructed or has an underactive bladder or both. Uh, if it's a patient, for example, presenting with very high pressure to choose overactivity and has also got deteriorating kidney function, whether he's offered Botox or neuromodulation, again, should be informed by the urodynamics by helping us understand the underlying pathology and matching it with the mechanism of action of these treatments. So, for example, you might find that this woman that you're investigating because of stress incontinence sy symptoms happens to have, in addition, detrusa overactivity. The trouble then is that if you do stress incontinence surgery, it is possible that that detrusa overactivity could deteriorate in severity, and she could start to experience urgency incontinence later on. It's absolutely vital to be able to warn her that that is a possibility so that she can make an informed decision on whether she feels it is worth the risk or not. Properly performed urodynamic studies are the best objective tools to understand the pathophysiology of underlying lower urinary tract symptoms. We know that these symptoms may be quite misleading. With urodynamic studies, it's more likely than any other tool to reach the objective diagnosis and so decide on specific management rather than utilizing umbilical treatments. This is especially needed before applying irreversible or surgical treatments. What we are offering as surgical treatment to our patients are irreversible treatments with considerable morbidity. For example, mitriotyl synthetic sling was the most commonly performed surgical option uh, in those aforementioned studies on stress urinary incontinence index patients. However, 
No need to tell you that we have not reached the optimal or ideal surgical option yet. Today, methyl synthetic slings are banned in some countries. Therefore, we should not forget that we do not have today a best and only surgical option that will work for every woman with stress urinary incontinence. So the information that we get from the urodynamic studies is of utmost importance when we counsel with our patients the available treatment options. And when there is an acontractile or a hypocontractile bladder, you might not consider to have a sling as a first choice. Or you might consider it, but you can better inform the patients about uh, what to expect, about the treatment results, about the possibility of complications. When you know that there is a possibility that they won't void properly after putting a sling in, for example, you can guide them, you can uh, explain them and explain that there is a possibility that they have, for example, to catheterize be, be after the, the treatment. If you are interested in having more data about the value of uh, urodynamics in female stress urinary incontinent patients, I think that these two uh, papers can provide some more uh, valid information. They were done by a group of uh, international experts in the field. It's interesting to see in the uh, new uh, version of the EAU guidelines on management of non-neurogenic female lower urinary tract symptoms, um, that the role of urodynamics uh, is a little bit reconsidered. Uh, in these guidelines, uh, uh, there is a, a clear statement that urodynamics are, um, are important in uh, uh, all the complicated patients uh, whenever there is a high uh, post-void residual, whenever there is uh, uh, a voiding dysfunction whenever there are some other factors that uh, uh, make uh, the patient complicated. And uh, um, also the fact that complicated patients are the most common is a little bit uh, um, uh, changing the, 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 the suggestion of uh, the, the panelists uh, on the use of uh, urodynamics. Urodynamics are primarily uh, a clinical tool for diagnostics of low urinary tract function, and that it stood its test of time uh, from its first application nearly one century ago. Here we have an opportunity to fully and accurately diagnose the underlying condition, better treat it, offering true personalized medicine, and really then is uh, where we can achieve best patient outcomes. Eurodynamics represents the only investigation that objectively evaluates the lower urinary tract function and dysfunction, improving surgeon's understanding of their condition, facilitating counseling, and enabling patients to play a role in decision-making.